Action. Chapter 21, Radio Wars. It's physically impossible for two identical objects to occupy the same space at the same time. But what if the objects were not physical, but frequencies in the space I was referring to was the space between your ears. If you're tuned into your favorite radio station lately, no matter what region you live in, by now you know they're probably engaged in all out radio war. I remember at a time when hip hop was only played late at night, if at all, now there are entire stations devoted to urban music. In most cases, there are two or more stations depending on the market and the cater to hip hop. What's the two stations in Columbus right now that's the two hottest in hip hop? 105 and 10. No, it's, it's 107.5. 107.5. And then it's 106.7. Seven. 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 Seven now. Well, actually, yeah, because it was point three, but it's, they didn't change it to point seven. And they sound so much alike now. Yeah. When it first yeah. came out, when the new one first came out, it was just a little bit different. But now, it sounds mm -hmm. so much alike. Mm -hmm. It was only different because they didn't have the commercials. But if we remember when 107 first came, they too sound a little different. So it just reminded me of when, when 107 first started. So they put this stuff out here for us. And, I mean, it's like, because one of the things he said it in the last chapter was that they have songs on a constant cycle. It's like, mm -hmm. I leave here for lunch, and I can hear the same song almost at the same time every lunch, and I got to ask the same question. First, what are they saying, and is that a male or female rapper? It's, it's to a point now with some of the artists, I can't tell whether they're males or female. And it's, it's that way across the country. It's not just here, it's ready. It's the fact that they're all owned by Radio 1 now. So if I travel and I go to Cleveland, or if I travel and I'm in Houston, I'm going to hear diff a ten, a 10 different songs that play to to that group of people where, I, where we're at, uh, their culture there, but it's still going to be 10 songs in rotation. Um, it just may be a 10 different songs, but it's the same wherever you go. Well, actually, if if we were to leave here and drive to Chicago and just check all of the the local hip-hop stations, they all got the same rotation. It's not even regional no more. So the same hot song that might be playing here or what they consider hot, and what's crazy is the songs don't become hot until they get a lot of radio. Yeah, you, know, you can't tell me that everybody like, I mean, Lil Wayne good, but you can't tell me everybody like Lil Wayne. Well, remember back in the day, you used to be able to call in and request, ask them, right. request them to play uh, your, your favorite song or whatever. Nowadays, it's bought and paid for off the top. So the people are not even having a choice in it. And when you lose that choice, do you lose hip-hop? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In New York City, two powerhouse stations, Power I mean, Hot 97 and Power 105, stage war on each other with an all-out assault for ratings, dollars, and notoriety. For years, Hot 97 ruled the airwaves in the city, but as the potential to reach more youth through advertising grew, they would soon have a company as Power 105 logged on by telling you to flip the switch to the new home of hip-hop and R&B. At that moment, you knew the shit was going down, not just in New York, but all around the country, because New York is the Flash, I mean, flagship city for hip hop. Sure enough, as I began to travel around the country, there were stations all along the East Coast that tried their best to mimic Hot 97, even going as far as having a Latino radio personality that resembled Angie Martinez. And in most cases, they were in direct competition with another station just down the dial. Clear Channel, which owns Power 105, has the largest amount of radio stations throughout America. So they have the power to make or break an artist with their clout alone. If their pilot program works in New York, look for them to begin to launch war against smaller stations in the near future. If they haven't already begun to do so, this is a war being fought and you're caught in the middle of it. These stations will stop at nothing to reach their in intended audience. You are nothing more than a kind of being led to economic slaughter. Before we get into the details of what triggered these events, I'd like to pose an attempt to answer a few important questions. Why are wars fought? 
who's been who benefits who are the pawns part part uh, uh, I don't know passes posses or in this case players being played and who wills the unseen hand wars are fought for money and power in this case the money is your hand a hard owned dollar so why wars fought radar wars you said why they fought yeah I mean, I, I got to ask if they really being fought anymore, but... Wars? Huh? You said wars? Yeah, radio wars. Because uh, if everybody trying to sign a like, I got to ask the question, is it really a war? Yeah. So well, what, what is the, the purpose of, of war, really? You might look at it. Look at every war that, that we have. We have a war on terror. We have a war on poverty. We have a war on, you know, terror. What, war on what drugs. Happened? War on drugs. So, you know, they, they use the, this inflammatory term, term of war to have people choose a side. So when sides are chosen, that's where dollars start going. But ultimately, the hand that's behind the scenes is actually playing both sides. Mm -hmm. So they're going to still win. It's a win-win situation. And I believe they win because there's one thing we don't know much about, and that's propaganda. We don't know how to use propaganda to our advantage. Um, we don't know why propaganda is used. So because we have, as a people, have little knowledge about pop propaganda, we don't think that far. And the second thing is we don't understand socialization, the fact that media, TV, music, all of these things socialize us. They're to teach us how to dress, how to act, what to think. And, and as long as we don't understand socialization, we'll continue to allow our kids to listen, thinking it's harmful, thinking it's just music. We'll continue to allow our kids to turn on the TV, thinking it's just entertainment, but we don't know the plant. We're, we're not thinking about the plants, that, the, the seeds that are being planted every time you turn on the TV or every time you turn on the radio. We don't think that far. Now, I'm going to say this, because you said something about propaganda. We know how to use propaganda. We have been using propaganda for a long time because that's all gossip is. We don't know how to use it right. You know what I'm saying? Because we use propaganda because propaganda is just spreading information. But I don't think we have developed the mind state to where we want to use that to build something rather than just tearing individuals down. Uh, very similarly, um, I had a brother come from Africa. He stayed at my house because... Um, of my relationships um, well actually he was part of my wife's family but before me and my wife got married me and her uncle was cool and he sent uh, a dude over to just stay and he was looking for jobs and he was a police officer in Africa and he started telling me about some of the stuff that they were able to do like the magician was able to do they go up to a tree and they could cut it and the tree would bleed and, and they could put all these spells on people and stuff like that and the thought, the thought hit me, but I ain't, I ain't want to ask him. I said, well, if y'all able to do all that magic, you know what I'm saying? Why is, why, why are, why is Ghana still basically a British colony? You know what I'm saying? We got all this magic, we got all this gossip that we could use in our own community against each other. We could curse each other, or we could dog each other out. But we can't direct that towards those that are really trying to destroy us. Mm. I'm sorry. Again, I said we don't understand it. I'm looking. I'm thinking about Facebook right now. Ooh. I'm thinking about I, I I use Facebook, and what I noticed a couple months ago, every time I go on there, there's a negative story. All of a sudden, there's negative stories. There's a lot of stories about black people leaving their kids in the car. There's a lot of stories about. I mean, just negative stories every time I turn around. But my news feed didn't used to look like that. Not to, I mean, just several months ago, it didn't look like that. But all of a sudden, and then I have my people who like and share it and don't understand or comment, and they don't understand that every time you like or comment or share, you're spreading that negative propaganda. Um, so, again, I, I don't think that we understand. We, we don't understand it enough or I don't think we understand it at all I, I agree I agree because I'm going to say this because I had to change a lot of because like you go in and you could change your timeline and like you said you don't have to share it but 
because I, I put a challenge out. My son did a, a video, and he he's tying the tie, right? And and I sent something out on Facebook, and I was just wondering. I said I wanted Cleveland to get a hundred hits for people watching this video. Now I, I know at least a hundred people. On you know what I'm saying? At least I, I got a lot of friends on Facebook, but I know at least a hundred of them. How many people are going to support Cleve? In learning and motivate him to go and learn more knots on time to time. You know what I'm saying? He might have got about seven hits, eight hits. But if Clay was in the in, in the kitchen cussing me out, how many hits would that get? You know what I'm saying? Because it's now because now that goes to our mind state. Because like just like with we got a we got a, we got a, a loop of certain type of music that's being sprung on us. We got. Um, a certain type of shows that are directed towards us. We have certain programming going on in the schools. We got certain programming that, and then we act all this stuff out on a, on a regular basis. We are basically being programmed for our own for our own downfall. You know what I'm saying? So when I see a, a message on Facebook, something positive, I'm less likely to click it and pass it on to other people. You know what I'm saying? But if I see some madness, you know what I'm saying? Less likely? You, more, more, more likely. No. I'm more, if, if I see something positive on Facebook, people, I'm oh, talking okay. about, in, talking about I'm, I'm talking about in general, maybe in general, I could be wrong, but a lot of people that I eliminated from my circles, one of the reasons I did that is because they're more likely to push that and push that negative stuff on. Because you could, you could post something positive. You could post something beautiful. You could post something um, enlightening. And it might get five hits. But even if we even if we comment, this doesn't make any sense. I can't believe this. And then we share it. We're still doing what doing we something. shouldn't be doing. We're still sharing the negative story. So just, and so what I do is I watch. I comment to myself. I don't like. I don't comment. I don't share. Unless it's something positive, something I'm not gonna say. You know, I don't look at those those um, things that come up in my timeline sometimes. But I never like, I never comment, I never share because I understand the minute I say something on that post, that's going into my. I'm not. I may not see it on my news feed, but my friends who are friends with me, it's going to go on their timeline. And I don't think that people understand that that's some a change that that Facebook has made. And that's how we continue to spread the negative, the negative messages, the negative images. And we're not liking and sharing the positive images that would enlighten or empower us. But we're constantly commenting on these negative images, these negative stories. They do that. We put it down on the computer. Because I got the, um, I got the tension forum up there. So if you go to that site, you go straight to the tension forum and just uh, um, log everybody in. Okay. okay. We moved to the 21st century. Okay. But he, he working for, see, because somebody else was going to write all this. See, I'm not with when he's, we, we not. If anybody got a, a smartphone, go to tribe, tribe.giamejourney.com. Scroll down to attendance, activities. I think it's on activities. No, it's attendance up under tribal calendar. And you can log everybody in. That's here. But go ahead. Come on. So who? Yeah, you just gonna let people take over the class, man? Come on, man. No, no, so no, who no. benefits from this war? Nobody. Nobody. We don't. Oh, they do. They I mean, do. I'm, yeah, I'm not proud of them. Okay. Well, oh, okay. Well, we have to right now since we at war. Yeah, if you so want to know, know, yeah, we really at war. There is a war. Then, but what's funny is. I, I read a lot of stuff and I hear people thinking that this is between like a black and a white and, and, and they make it as seem as, as though white people profit but really the only people that are profiting are the people who control I mean who own who own the um, the resources and those who distribute them those are the only people who profit everyone else we're all cons whether you're black white um, if, if you're working class and middle class, you're not profiting. It, it's a it's a war on all of us. But we we study. We can't identify the the true enemy. But white supremacy they they profit from from all of this. Yeah, I think sometimes the um the rappers that's getting the most radio hits sometimes benefit. Well, they benefit themselves. 
is what they think they do until they get too deep and they realize they want to get out. But while they're way they while their songs are getting played on the radio, they getting the most money and the most clout, like they said, and they who benefiting themselves and not benefiting the community. Well, we're seeing a lot of them after they get God or maybe their time is up, then they want to speak out. But while you're actually benefiting from it or being controlled by it. Is I mean, basically, I think you're not allowed to speak. You're not allowed to speak, but a lot of them end up speaking out after the fact. Yeah. Or those before, the ones that don't really make it, you know, you would think, like, you know, why didn't they make it? But that um, it was a show that used to come, come on TV one, and a lot of the same story was the same. They didn't, they, they cut, it comes to a certain line that you have to cross, and it, they would say, you know what I'm saying, selling myself wasn't more important than. I mean, selling myself for money is more important than my life, you know, that kind of thing. So it can get to that part, too, where they were, you know, you, they, they even still wasn't talking about the underlying uh, power that was there. They were just saying, like, you know, you just get to a certain point where you don't want to cross certain lines. I shared a song with uh, Mr. Brown, and I believe that Beyonce and other artists maybe put messages in their song where they are admitting that they know that they have sold themselves for, you know, so that they know that they have sold out for this fame and that they do worry about what's going to happen in the end because they know their time will come to an end. But we, because I don't, you know, I'm not a fan of her songs, I may not listen or I might skip that song, but I believe that they put messages in the song where they are admitting what's going on, but sometimes it goes over our heads. Or it's, it's it, it, and also that that power of the hidden message, you know, messing with the subconscious, you know, that is definitely in the messages and in the music, and um, it's put out there, and um, it's not always obvious for you to go back in, mm -hmm. you know, well, um, at this point, slow it down and all that. It's not that obvious, so yeah, it's there. So who are the people being played right now? <laughs> well, act well, yeah, uh, but right now because we're in the room studying it, we no longer being played. Once you start, once you identify the problem, and you're willing to do something about it, because we've been meeting for a, as a group, this group, for about a year now. So if we continue getting played, then it's, it's strictly oh, yeah, our fault. Oh, Mr. Brown, you, you said not. What, what did you say? say? Can you say it one more time? I can't remember what I now said. Now that you identify what. I don't know what I say. <laughs> it's all, it, no, because I, I mean, because I know I run into young people all the time to talk about they they have anger management issues. Oh, so the oh, fact oh. that they're able to identify Identif that man. there's a problem now means that I can now start to deal with it. And they try to, you know, they try to say that oh I can't handle it because I have this anger management problem. But if you're able to identify what the issue is, you can start addressing it. Oh, that's too much like right, Mr. Uh, my brother. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, I mean, but seriously, uh, because we know we can't say that we're victims anymore. Uh, and, and when you know changing, you're willing to participate. If, if you're not changing, because some of us know some people are enlightened and they continue not to make changes. Like, I'm, I've known certain things for a while, but I'm like, I... I didn't want to take TV away from my kids because I couldn't figure out what they were going to do once I took TV away for years. And then finally, I just took TV away. But for years before taking TV away, when I knew what was going on, I continued to allow them to watch and indulge because I'm thinking, what are my kids going to do when I say no more TV or no more 107 or no more music? What are they going to do? They're not going to know what to do. But then finally I figured it out. They'll, they'll figure out what to do. Right. Because me and my kids always. He said read a book. If they figure it, it out. Is. I mean, because when you come to me and tell me that, oh, there's nothing to do. Oh, I'm always suggesting mm -hmm. read a book, write something, you know. Play outside. Like, they, play they, they, ball. Or, or something like that. So so we don't get that with me too often. Like, you know, mom, there's nothing to do. This one right here, mom, there's nothing to do. He don't quite come to me like that anymore. He's like, let me find some way to be out. So she don't know. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like my my grandfather, who, who's ninety one. I mean, he was one of thirteen. So he said, "We didn't know that we were poor. We always had something to do. There was food in the house, and so we didn't want for anything. So uh, the so concept, the concept of being bored, per se, they they didn't have because they were able to use their imagination. No one else had their imagination captured." 
that's what the war is really is on their imagination. Mm. Well, I'm gonna say, I'm, now well, I'm gonna say that. Just go back to like even them saying that the kids don't go outside and play no more. Um, just because of the other game, TV, or whatever. So it, even if in, in, in an outlet like that, you know, you have we have to be able to bring that back because it, it even goes back to physical exercise. We need to be getting that besides them just sitting down, not moving around. Well, um, one of the things that, that because I've been doing some research, and um, one one point came uh, uh, really hit me. One, the diet, and get bringing it back to what we're talking about right now, is that. A lot of people in America are sleep deprived. We are we are sleep deprived, and they say there's three ways that you can identify somebody that's su sl uh, suffering from sleep deprivation: um, overweight, unhealthy, and, and 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 they stated this this way in the book: stupid. Because when you lack sleep, you don't. In sleep, we uh, not only release stress. But allows us to go into that imagine that that realm of imagination. Now, another piece that go along with that is also daydreaming and boredom. See, because a lot of people think, because like they're not only messing with our imagination, they're taking away our boredom time. It's the boredom time where individuals are forced to use their imagination. So now I I don't have to be bored no more. I mean, when when we look at it, all of us right now. Especially adults, we could pick up our phones. Soon as we get bored, we pick up our phones. We start strolling, scrolling through stuff. Why is it that it's so it's so easy for us to jump past boredom? Because boredom makes us face for certain things about ourselves and face certain things in the world. But it was through boredom that we created all of the stuff that we have now. The drum comes out of boredom. You know what I'm saying? The wheel comes out of boredom. Fire came out. You know, I'm sitting around. I'm cold. I'm bored. I'm cold. Hey, well, what happened if I hit these two rocks together? I remember a spark. Oh, boom. Boredom forces us to be creative. So by not allowing our kids to, to suffer boredom, we stop them from being able to be creative. By stopping ourselves from being bored, we stop the creative process. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, and one more thing about the, the lack of sleep. The brain actually starts to shrink. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who wills the unseen hand? Hmm? Who holds the unseen hand? Who has it? Who has it? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, I just got accused of being an Illuminati yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just say this: the day that the Illuminati start letting black folks in is no longer Illuminati. Illuminati. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm keeping it all the way real. So I, you know, because somebody. The, the the comment was, you know, you doing all that African stuff, you pouring libations and stuff like that, so they think you Illuminati. I'm like, wow, wow. I mean, I mean, people that really don't have any imagination whatsoever, you throw out a concept to them, and they will plug it into anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm pouring libations for your ancestors, and you telling me that I'm I'm part of a cabal. To take over the world. Well, actually, I am part of a cabal to take over the world because now this is this the question I have for for my people. If we know and we all agree that in some form or fashion there's some type of conspiracy that's working to maintain us a, in a position. Claude Anderson said ten years ago that if we do not start harnessing our economic power, we will be a permanent underclass. We are. We have passed that three year period. So in a sense, we have, in a sense, moved into a state of being a permanent underclass. And we know that there is a organized effort to hold us at that. Then where is our conspiracy to work our way up out of that? Where is our conspiracy? You, you fight a conspiracy with a conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. You fight a conspiracy with a conspiracy. So where is our conspiracy? Because we got all these people that can identify the conspiracy. They can identify. They can tell you the parties. They can break it down all the way. But I have not heard anybody talking about our conspiracy to conquer the conspiracies that's been launched against us. Well, I believe there is a conspiracy. Hmm? I believe that we're in the midst of like the great awakening. I, I believe people are waking up. I believe people are starting to think. 
um, people are starting to acknowledge, and I believe people are coming together. I know, at least on my front, one thing I did was when I joined Instagram, I, I became open to, you know, here it's hard to find people on the same page um, or, or it seemed that way. But then once I opened myself up to a, a new venue, here I, I found out that there's so many people who think just like me, so many people who are just as fed up, so many people who are on the same page. Now it's just about are, can we provide a form or some type of um, network where we can come together? But they've given us the tools. We just don't use them. We have them at our disposal. We just don't use them as artillery. But we have them. Yes, definitely do. Hey, we on radio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everybody who's listening can hear this. How dare we as a people actually say that we're really trying to build our own black economy when we're doing it with someone else's money? Mm. How can I actually say that I'm trying to like build something on my on my own with someone else's resources, something that someone else gave me that was probably built off the backwater of whatever or leftovers of whatever resources they used to build it, what they built up? How can I say that I can actually like make a stable community if I'm too worried about someone else's resources? We have the resources and we have the communication skills, but the real problem is the fact that we don't use them. People say that we need to go back to Africa. People say that we do this. No one has really, my life growing up, no one's really actually told me how. I figured it out though. I mean, if we have like people coming from Africa, starting up businesses, these people, these same people that the people who are in power right now cannot tell us about. Obviously, they're out there. Obviously, they're in Columbus, Ohio, supposedly the, the um, number one city to start a business in. So then why are we as a people still caught up on some other, I guess you could say, bull crap? Excuse my language, kids. You cute. You cute. How can we... <coughs> As a people say that we're caught up on like some Jordans. I mean, that we're actually enlightened when we're like caught up on Jordans and that new TV show and the VMAs and who actually has the best shoes, what celebrity is this, what celebrity is that, who makes our music. I mean, yeah, they're only like a smart, small part of the system, but whether you want to believe it or not, there's like a large part of the system. As in, there's a bigger part than just us outside. I mean, if the Asians can do it, if the Mexicans can do it, if the Latinos can do it. Especially if white people can do it. If they can come from their barbaric state of the caucus, of the caucus mountains and systematically take over the world, then why can't we? Why can't we look at what they did right and correct the flaws that went wrong with us? I'm not saying that we should be like them. I say we should never be like them. I'm saying that we should be better. And as a better person, I would say that we actually, that we should go home, but we should not. I believe this is our home. My mm -hmm. people built this country. My people fought in the first war here. They fought in <coughs> every war. So this is just as much my country as it is anyone's country. I mean, it, 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 with the exception of Native, uh, quote unquote, Native Americans. But I believe when they first arrived, when anyone first arrived, I'm no, I know for sure my, my upbringing tells me that they found black people here. We were already here. And then when you think about the fact that when they started the colonies, the first thing they did was bring black people. So we 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 built this country. So for me not to be, um, um, I, people look at me crazy when I say I'm a proud American, but why wouldn't I be? This country would be nothing if it weren't for my people. This is my country. Now, I respect your ideals, I really do. <laughs> but there's a difference between you building the country and then you running the system. That runs. And guess what? The same the same money that started this country, the same money that paid for slaves to come here, those are the same people who, when we talk about Illuminati or when we talk about white supremacy, those are the same families. Those are the same people. That's how that's how I know there is a there is a higher power here that that does run things. Those same people who provided the income for this country to be colonized bring slaves here. They continue to, to, to hold and, and, and own all, all the resources. They do. But at the same time, there's nothing there's nothing to stop me from being from knowing that uh, uh, seeing the truth. 
Because once I see the truth, once I can use that to empower me, once I know that that, that, that my people did great things here, then I can use that energy to, and harness it for greatness. But if I'm sitting here thinking that I don't have any stakes here, that this is not my country or anything like that, I, I, I can't do much. But the reality is that our kids, they, they don't, they need to know that as well. Our young people need to know that this is just, and then we maybe can take it over. Maybe then we can take responsibility. Maybe then we can do some things that make some sense. But if I'm thinking that this is not my country and there's nothing here, for, you know, for me, then I'm forgetting what all the things that my ancestors did here in this country. This is just as much my country. I, that's just how I feel. And like I said, I say this all the time and people look at me like I'm crazy. I say it all the time and people think that I'm insane. But this is how I feel because I know my people were here first in the beginning. I know that now. I know. I also know about the powers that be and what got them here, and, and and about money, and about control. I get that too. But like you said, the one thing that they did, the white people, one thing that they have over us is this whole psychological, this this whole psychological warfare that they can do. But I I believe they too stole that from my people. They too took the science and they used it against us. But we 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 have that power as well. We just don't use it. We don't even know that we have it. So that's that goes back to me saying we have propaganda. We we but we don't know any. I mean, there that we don't know anything about propaganda. We don't know it, so we can't use it to our advantage. But the whole psychological warfare, the fact that they're able to socialize us through media, through mass media, through music, and we don't have enough sense to turn it off. That's Empire. the problem. Empire. Oh my goodness. I've, I've never seen it. <laughs> I, ain't, I haven't either. But just the just um, but the um, the advertisement for it came on, and it gave you all those negative in, images and you know imagery right there. You know, saying that I'm um, like that is that again to tear us down. I know that. However, you got Facebook blowing up on Thursdays. That's how I know what day it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh oh, such and such, 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 such. And then you hear about Same the storyline. Yes, yeah, you hear about the storyline, and right. you, and people want to deny that media is effeminizing our men, our young boys. That they're, oh, they're, they're that, it's effemini that the music is effeminizing our men. And I said, how are we gonna fight a war if, if our men are dead in jail, feminine, right. <laughs> or, or no one to protect? Because if the boys become men, this is gonna be the same thing. That's, that's, well, what, that's what it is. Well, hold on. I'm gonna say this. You come. <laughs> thinking men because the, the issue is I don't care if you become a man or not you only a danger to this system or any other system if you're able to think I need your body you know what I'm saying I need I, I, I need well I used to need your body now they don't even need our bodies no more you know what I'm saying so if you look at the current trends of technologies it's, it's moving to a point where they're not even going to need to, to maintain the system, you're not going to need strong backs anymore because we are already building strong backs. Like I tell the kids all the time, there is no more jobs in the future, so y'all need to start at, at, at your age right now. You need to be thinking about things you love and what you're going to bring to the world because it's going to be ideas that's going to be moving the world in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to provide income to help other people. You know what I'm saying? So we got to start thinking like that. But we need to finish this chapter so we can get to the Vedic man. Wait a minute, real quick though. Oh, we ain't done. <laughs> I just want to say that um, the part about um, why can't we be better? You said that, you know what I'm saying? And to me, I can say that we are definitely better because anything that we put our minds to, we definitely bring flavor to. You know, anything that we decide that we're going to make happen for us, we bring all the creativity to it. And hip hop is definitely one of the visual, <laughs> you know. Really, every sense it, it, right. it empowers every sense of what I'm saying that we are better and we bring the flavor when we put our minds to it. And, so it's, and that's know. hence that's why you got movies like Empire because they only focus on one aspect of hip hop because that's the biggest issue that that, that a lot of us got to deal with because most people when you say hip hop the only thing they can think about is rap. Mm -hmm. But you know, right before some of y'all came up in here, we was watching another aspect of hip hop as far as the b born. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got all these elements that's being neglected. And the major element that most people don't even ever touch is the knowledge. We never really discuss the knowledge of hip-hop, how it brings consciousness, or how it's a tool of consciousness. 
But anything that's a tool, because just like I take a screwdriver and I can put that table together, I can also take a screwdriver and take your life. And somebody has figured out how to take our tool and turn it against us and take our lives. You know what I'm saying? But once you become conscious, like I said, you're responsible for the information. So if they keep on continue doing it to you and yours, then you are a willing participant. So congratulations. Go ahead and finish the chat. Excuse me. Empire is a TV show. Yes. And they are mixing all the elements in it. And I have seen it. And anybody who thinks they are conscious or calls themselves conscious better be watching. And they have mixed the dance element in there. As well as the lyrics, which would be why am I going to watch it? Huh? Just so I can be, just. I mean, why am I am I watching it just so I can know what the enemy and and prepare myself? Is, is that why I'm watching it? Yeah, I, I I'm of the belief that you should always be informed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, know, I get you that. You have aspect. to know what's there, and if you're discussing and you're trying to save your people, you have to know what they have seen or in, I are, are in touch with. I was just listening to a. Um, interview KRS one did about um all the elements of hip hop and he said like D J N like D E E J A Y I N is spelled like that for a reason because they're elements and like chemicals how penicillin and stuff got the mm -hmm. I N after so they did it on purpose and um cutting and um cutting and mixing was at the beginning when it was the cut stones mm -hmm. and when they mixed berries her things was not supposed to mix and graffiti the oldest graffiti was um dirty 30, like 30,000 years ago, and it's before Homo sapiens, before the modern man, they had a handprint and he sprayed berries on his hand, and that was the graffiti mm -hmm. that sprayed. Mm -hmm. the, um, what else? Uh, MCing was like how we uttered, like, uh, like we did before words, before organized words, then um, what else? Breaking. We, you know how uh, the Buddha, they like dance, but you, they're, they're dancing to us, but the other people, you could tell what they're saying because it's sign language. He said that was some of the first language, so hip hop is a whole organized like it's a whole life being since the beginning everyone is hip-hop you don't know it or you do like you don't know that you're hip-hop or you do it um actually in 2001 krs one and like 200 p other people came up to the un and uh declared the um hip-hop is a now worldwide culture, worldwide international culture that's right. Mm. right let's face it radio stations are not in the business of playing songs, they're in the business of advertisement. As much as we would like to think Hot 97, Power 105, or any other station for that matter, we really love hip hop music or playing all of these songs to support and advance the culture. Nothing could be further from the truth. The DJs and radio personalities may love it, but the owners could care less. They are the ones singing, signing the checks, and collecting the big bucks. Yet the songs that are played every day are directly connected to how they obtain their power the power to tell you what to wear, what to drive, what to drink, who to shoot, how to treat women, and of course, what to buy. How many times have you heard a whack song, but after your favorite station played it a thousand times, you thought it was hot? That's the power radio can have over your conscious and subconscious mind. On the surface, it would appear that we are benefiting from having a choice of what station we like to listen to, but when all the smoke clears, this these stations are, are after the same things, your money and the power to control you. The madness has even breached over into the artist realm as stations have begun to give certain artists ultimatums in terms of promotion. If an artist does, pro does promos for a rival station, he or she may face the harsh reality of losing radio spins or being dropped from the rotation altogether. So as an artist, you must choose your poison. Hot 97 was nicknamed Shot 97 as an incident after incident involving rappers and shootouts became a common event. These The ratings would go through the roof as rappers would use the station's event on as a platform to, to, to attack other rappers. The station under the guise of being neutral, of course, would allow such action to take place. Meanwhile, the only thing there really co concerned about is Arbitron ratings. We certainly do not benefit ha by having our young brothers and sisters who work at these stations and truly love hip hop hurting or rappers possibly killing each other over somebody else's cause. After all, in the end, no matter what station you choose, everybody other than ourselves would benefit and get rich. 
to be blunt, we are acting like niggas on frontline defending masses' property. The same really list tactics of putting one against the other and divide and conquer are ever so present if you pay close attention. Do you think they are? They care if we kill each other off in the streets like animals. They'll have your position at the station filled by tomorrow. Mm. All the while, the unseen hand sits back and laughs like, look at these niggas fighting over crumbs. Don't be fooled. This is a corporate war being fought through hip-hop. And when you turn on your radio, television, we are the ones being made to look like savages while corporations that are the unseen hand remain just that unseen. Well, what chapter was that? Go on, say the name of the chapter. For uh, chapter 21. Yeah. So now we're going to move to the baby man. I got the board working. Well, actually, Deshaun got the board working. Thank you, Deshaun. Thank you, Deshaun. Now I got to get my computer to work. I am... Um, I was in a meeting the other day, and I, I made a statement in the meeting, and it kind of it kind of upset somebody because. Um, what you said something that upset somebody? I said something that upset somebody. I made them feel uncomfortable because they was trying to they was trying to um, get a new idea across, or at least trying to share their idea, and. They got kind of frustrated because the person wasn't recept receptive to the idea. You said what? They was upset because it didn't seem that the person was receptive to the idea. And I said, you need to keep sharing your idea because you're planting a seed. So I used an example from history. Well, from mythic history. I said, uh, well, you know, one of the powers... Uh, uh, well, I, um, in Islam, they call Satan the Great Whisperer because he has no power over you. He just can influence you with ideas. So they call him the Whisperer. So he whispers to you, and you decide whether or not you're going to violate. He can't make you do anything. So the person got upset because I was I was describing what he needed to do to that aspect uh, of Satan, and he couldn't hear anything I said. Because I used the mythic idea of Satan being a whisperer. I said, dude, when you try to get your idea across, it it might seem like people are not hearing you, but you got to realize you plant seeds. And I bring that up because we're looking at this math piece, and because one of my elders told me a long time ago, I had a discussion with him. He said, we asked the question, well, how do you know the difference between God and the devil? So he took us out of that mindset. He said, y'all asked the wrong question. He said, you need to learn how to tell the difference between the nature of good and the nature of evil. He said, you know it's good and of God if it adds and multiplies life. You know it's of the devil if it subtracts and divides life. So I was thinking, after I got out that meeting, my elder basically used mathematics to describe life. Addition and subtraction, Multiplication and division. This is the point that I got. Life is like a, a equation. If you don't know the functions, whether you want to call it good or evil, if you don't know how to work the functions, you're not going to have a good life. So one of the reasons we focus on the math piece is because we want y'all to learn how to add and multiply, subtract and divide, because both of those qualities are needed. Good and evil are needed. I don't know what's going on with the board, Miss Tracy. Uh, please. I had a set up night for you too. I don't know what happened. No. I think you can, should be able to use this. There you go, Miss Tracy. Some of this is a little recap. Uh, what I'm learning with the Vedic Math is giving you an opportunity to um, use your mental math skills, or I should I say sharpen your mental math skills. So for the first one, we're going to draw the circle. And we're going to place 10 points around. Remember, before it was 
the 10 was at the top, 5 was at the bottom, and then the 1, 2, 3, 4, around the side, 6, 7, and 9. Hurry up. So now after we make the made our ten points, if we take and we connect the one to the nine, the eight to the two, the seven to the three, six to the four. What we're going to look at is the one and the nine, the two and the eight, and the seven and the three, and the six and four all equal ten. Right? Mm -hmm. right. So one plus nine, two plus eight, three plus seven, six plus four. Well that is the base the basics of the middle math. If you can connect that to the next um, the next base number, such as 10. So if you have a number like 9, and then you know that you're only one away from 10, that's going to ha help you to add, add things a little quicker. How do you go? Oh. She has the pen in her hand. Oh. Smart word is so smart. <laughs> so now, Gina, we connect to the move points. We can we, we we can re, we can reflect the ten point circle in the same reference as the number line. When you look at a number line, and we have say the numbers one through ten, we can easily see how far we are away from the next number to the next number. You know, ten take away two, that's eight. So mm -hmm. it, you can reflect it the same way. So my question to you is, how many pairs of numbers do we have to add up to ten? Four. How many? How many no, pairs? Pairs. Four. No, five. Five, five. pairs. Remember? One plus nine. That's where we're going to list them. One plus nine. Two plus eight. Three plus seven. Six plus four. And what we didn't talk about before was the five plus five. This is what we can refer to as part of, it's called completing the whole. The whole is 10. If we have part of it, say we have nine, we are one away from 10, right? So that's part of a whole. So we call it completing the whole. So when we look at, in reference to the 10 point circle, we can add with E, six plus four, we know it's 10. However, when you get into another one like 16 plus four, you should be able to easily add that again because the six plus four is 10, right? right. And your 10 is 10 by itself. So 10 plus 10 to give you the 20. 16 plus four is 20. What the point is, is to give you that mental engagement. So if you already know what the basic number, the, the basic five pairs are when you're adding, then it is easier to add the other the other tens. So, 22 plus eight. If we already know that the 22, the two and the eight is 10, you're adding the 20 plus 10, right? right. So that's giving you the 30. So, can somebody tell me, 61 plus nine? 70. 47 plus three? 50. 54 plus six? 60. 38 plus two? 40. So we're gonna use, you use the same concept to complete the tens and add. What I found when I was going through the Vedic math, it just shows you other strategies to still use those concepts so it's not just looking at it from one way. So in this case, 
you have the 22, the 22 plus the 28. So in the tens place, you have the two and the two. The two and the two, which is the 22 and the 28, sorry. This gives you the four tens. So four tens is, what's four tens? Four. 40. Okay. So that's gonna give you 40. But again, we know the eight plus two is 10. So that gives you the 40 plus the 10 is how much? 50. 50. So 22 plus 28, that gives you the 50 if you break it down in the same concept. So you're adding again, you have the, you, you're adding your tens together, and then you're adding your ones together. You're adding those together. It sounds like it's more difficult, but explaining it makes it seem like it's mm -hmm. a lot going on versus you mm -hmm. actually doing it. So here we go again. If you look at the 72 plus, 72 plus the 18, you have the seven tens, and you have the one ten. Right there, that's eight tens. So that's eighty. We know that the eight plus the two is ten by itself. So that's gonna give you ninety. That's easier than when you put it on the put it on your paper and then you have the understand. Any questions? Straightforward. It's easier. It's easier when you do it in your head like that. Right. Right. Again, working on sharpening the mental. Sharpening the mental. So, so right now. Like look at those numbers. We should we should start with the we should start with the ten. So we kind of we're adding opposite of the way that we would learn in school. Yeah, in it's in this in this way this way we're actually working the math like we read, right? Because we read from. Left to right. Left to right. So if you're working with your tens and then your ones, that's the way you read. Now, we were still talking about completing the whole. Again, seeing as the whole, to find the difference in the whole, this is still, it's, it's the backwards concept that, again, if I have nine, I'm close to 10 by one. So I'm one short of 10. So that's a deficiency or a difference. So you work at the same way. The example I put, 39 is close to 40 and short one of 40. 67 close to 70 and it's below three. Again, using different words, meaning the same thing so that it's not just looked at as only one way, like, oh well. So then we look at seven. Seven is close to what? 10. And it's below what? Three. Below ten, what? I think I did the typo, y'all. Oh yeah, the pages got messed up a little bit. So seven is close to ten, and, and it's three below, and it's three below ten. You you're rating it both ways, meaning the same thing. Forty nine is close to fifty, and it's below by one. By one. And it's one below. Fifty. I'm gonna come in here and just practice on this board one day. <laughs> Twenty-six is close to thirty. How many below? Four. Eighty-eight is close to. And how many below? Two. Two. So if, you, if you're thinking more of what the difference is when you're doing your subtraction and you're adding, 
then that's going to that's going to lead us to what we talked about the last time that we t talked about the uh, better math, which is coming up. We add to complete a whole. That's what we did the last time. Put the uh, on the side. So we add to complete the whole, 28 plus 5. 28 is close to 30, but it's too below 30. So when we look at 28 plus 5, to make this 30 would be, if we're at 28, to make it 30 would be how many? Two. Two. This is just our little side note. To make it 30, it'd be two. However, to make it 30, if we subtract 2 from the 5, how many is that? 3. 3. So that would make that 3. So again, together we would be adding up 30 plus your 3. 30 plus 3? 33. It's 33. And all we did was take our 2 from... We took our two from the five to complete the whole to make it 30. And then what was left from that was the three. And we just added that together. So that made it 33. So what I did was, I looked at um, these few addition problems, 49 plus 5, 58 plus 3. And for the first example, I kind of showed you what I was doing. For 49, we, I was 1 away from 49, so I added that 1 to get the 50. But I took that 1 away from the 5. That made it 4. So then that was easier for me to add the 50 plus the 4. So 49 plus 5 is 54. So can y'all do the next two to get a little practice? So when you take the plus 3 or the, the number that you pull out, you take you you put you do the exact opposite to the number below, which mm -hmm. cancels you, each other out. Cancels each other out. Because remember our number line, negative three plus three equals zero. zero. Did you get sixty one and forty three? who didn't get 61 and 43. Okay, now, for the for two more, I want y'all to do them and tell me what answer y'all get.
take away three. So what answer did you get for the next two? For 79 plus 8? 87. 60 plus 4? 64. I didn't do the uh, middle part because... Okay, for the last one, I would like for Raquel to come and show us how to do it. Uh -oh. Call somebody out. <laughs> Call her out. Two black, two, two strong. Ninety-two. Did y'all get ninety-two? Yeah. Good job. Please, she, she, she like seven plus six. <laughs> she done called you out. Called him out. Rest your hand on it. You got. You can't rest your hand on the board. with tears and make it easier for you to do it in your head, huh? Mm -hmm. I should have pulled it up on, in Word for you because when I translated it to Google Drive, it kind of threw the pages on. Now all the recap is, it's giving you a recap of what we did. We had the 10 point circle. What did we learn with the 10 point circle? Got five pairs that equals 10. Five pairs that equals 10. So, what are the five pairs, Psyche? Um, 9 plus 1, 8 plus 2, 7 plus 3, 6 plus 4, and 5 plus 5. Right, and so, good job, Psyche. So, the wholeness. 
That makes it easier for us to complete the whole. 16 plus 4. 16 plus 4? 20. 18 plus 22? 40. 18 plus 22? 40. Okay, so the deficiency. We're looking at the deficiency, which the number 8 is close to what number? 2. I mean 10. <laughs> It's close to 10. How many below 10 is it? 2. 27 is close to? 30. How many below is it? 3. Three. Three. So we add to complete a whole. 38 plus 5. What do we do to 38 plus 5 to make that easy for us to work with? We take 2 from 5. Oh, whoa. And then oh, you the remainder. You cheated. Two, three, it's her turn. What? <laughs> 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 it's Brother Devin. <laughs> we take... We take the two that we need to get the 40 from the five, and then we add the remainder, so we should end up with 43. Good job. That's exactly right. We do, we For 57 plus four, what are we going to do here, Moena? 57 plus time Miss Tracy get done doing this we're going to be able to do all types of mathematics quickly and in our heads so now alright we running short on time so what I can do because y'all know the physical fitness test is coming up again you know so the challenge is up so the challenge y'all got to get ready so those that took it last year got to do a little bit better than you did last year now, I'm going to make this available. I'm experimenting with isometrics once again. So I'm going to um, make some free isometric exercises available. This is out of a book called The Art of Shin Ku. Um, one of the dopest books I ever ran into. And um, I was looking on the internet. It was hard to find some exercises. But I know for a fact Bruce Lee used to use a lot of isometric exercises. So those that want to be cut up by the summertime, check these out. And they free, you don't need to go to a gym, and you can do them for about three minutes a day and start seeing the results. 
real soon because you ain't you're doing nothing but applying your muscles against the muscle. Next time, when we have a little bit more time, if we start coming a little bit earlier, we'll have time to break off and go to the gym. But we run out of time, so now um, Brother Deshaun is going to come up. Come on, baby bubble. Oh, wait, you have something right there. Huh? Uh-huh. What's up? What's up? You must already have something else. Oh, he done set up a frazzy. Oh, my God. Man, don't make me Man, dizzy. Yeah. I'm not going to throw up. Well, I, I, Deshaun, I, I, I'll say congratulations for, for being being a biter, learning from from your mentor, Hatem, who oh. writes down and steals. Anybody want to copy? That everybody else does. <laughs> Ever. How many? And then represents it as his own. 17. questions that we have to learn. The first five questions are what I'm going to go over today. Uh, there are three levels to learning. Number one, the memor memorization. Number two, intelligence of the mind. And number three, intelligence of the heart. So again, the first one is what? Memorization. Second one, intelligence of the mind. Third, intelligence of the heart. The first one is the key. Memorization. Excuse me, will we get a copy of this? Eventually. Eventually, that works. <laughs> All right, the first question. What is a warrior? Someone usually used to like either defend their homeland or to take over someone else's. Alright. Are you 
Are you a warrior? Yes. All right. So the correct answer for what is a warrior? Correct answer is one who is experienced or involved in conflict. Everyone in this room is a warrior. We all deal with conflict. Some of us deal with conflict in the classroom. Some of us deal with conflict in the workforce. But we are constantly dealing with conflict. Any questions? Statements? All right, next. What type of conflict exists? What are the different types of conflict? All right. Good question. Conflict with self, conflict with world, conflict, conflict with, with self, man. <coughs> man. All right, in school, give me a conflict. Mathematics. How's mathematics, mathematics for conflict? Someone, for someone who is not strong in mathematics, mathematics can be a conflict. What if I'm strong in conflict in, in uh, math? Would it still be a conflict? Nah, math may not be your conflict, but you do have a conflict within the school. I disagree. Yep. Right. As somebody you, who has a math, mathematics degree. Uh huh. Even being strong in math, there were problems that were ultimately challenging to me that caused a conflict. Because conflict is really about problem solving as it is. All right. Any more statements or questions? All right. Keep my mouth shut. Sorry. What does a warrior do? We protect the nation by developing our spirit, mind, and body. We prepare for conflict on all levels and are willing to give our lives in the process. Yes. So what are, what are those letters inside the parentheses mean? Uh, that's a typo. I remember it. I forgot. It's, what? It's a typo. It is not a typo. You mind sharing what it means? So I. Although Hotem and I have a, a conflict about this, but he says intuition. Uh, I say intellect. What? So intuition. The M, mind. E is the emotion. S, spiritual. And P, physical. Can you say that one more time? So the I is intellect. Conflict within, within the intellect. I mean, I'm sorry. Intuition, my bad. I'm gonna go off of this question. Eyes, intuition. M is the mind. E is emotional. Emotion. S, spiritual. P, physical. the response to that, uh, I guess my question is, what is the difference between giving your life and losing it foolishly? And this is open to whoever wants to respond. Did you ask the question again? It says, we protect the nation by developing our spirit, mind, and body, and we prepare for conflict on all levels. Levels that we talk about intuition, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical, and are willing to give our lives in the process. And my question is what is the difference between giving your life and then losing your food? I think if you give your life, it's more on purpose, and even the term that you use, losing your life, mm -hmm. means that it was taken for maybe no reason. Supposed to give them on purpose and leave you, you know, or you gave somebody or something responsibility over your life. I, I agree. There's definitely a difference between living life on purpose mm. and just haphazardly going along and, and allowing things to happen. How 
How does a warrior learn? How does a warrior learn? By going to school. We learn by asking challenging questions that opens us up to information about ourselves and the world. Right. So, um, so you mean, as far as we're concerned, if I, if I don't ask questions, I'm, I'm not a warrior? No. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not a warrior that's 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 learning. Right. You're not asking challenging questions. I open you up to information about yourself in the world. No, you're not on the right path. That's just my perspective. Which it sounds like you're not a warrior if you're not willing to ask a question, those challenging questions to move forward. Right. So if I'm struggling in class and I choose not to ask this uh, challenging math question or help with this challenging math question, no, I'm not. I'm seeking the information I need to be warrior. Who's, who's providing the answer? Mr. Brown. <laughs> Mr. Brown. I didn't hear you. Mr. Brown. <laughs> Mr. Brown. I think that's like one of one of the biggest issues I see within the culture of people is this whole idea if I ask a question or if I open myself up to being vulnerable and let people know I don't know that makes me weak or not knowing instead of asking and acquiring the knowledge it seems like our kids even my students they i have one class that asks me tons of questions they want to know and they ask me questions and i tell them i'm a teacher because i like learning i don't know all the answers sometimes they ask me things i don't know and i just say let's go find them but then i have another class who they ask no questions i could tell them anything i could even put some false information in and they wouldn't challenge it and i think it's because of this ego or this fear that if I ask a question, now everyone knows I don't know. Whereas my thing is, I, I, I ask all the questions. It's important to ask questions because there's usually somebody else that wants to know that same question. So you, you're doing yourself and others a favor when you ask questions. And, and like, like Ms. Ross brought up, one of the most important pieces is that a warrior is about conquering fear. Mm -hmm. So if you're fearing what other people think about you, the question that you have to ask yourself is, are you truly a warrior? When we talk about warrior, because a lot of people, we, we associate warriorship with just being able to fight. But we only think about physical fighting. You know what I'm saying? How much courage do it, does it really take to be like, I don't know. To tell people I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the answer. And then it take even more courage to actually do the research and come up with the answer. All right, I'm, I'm assuming. But also, I don't want to. I don't want to stay past the point that Trina made when she asked the question, "Who determined the answer?" You know, actually, that's an excellent question because even within this. The, the the hope is that we develop our own responses mm -hmm. to these questions as well, so that we're able to have our own personal answer to the to the what's being asked. And this also these these particular answers that are given are something that corporately we would be a response to say that you know in, in a setting so that we would know who has been amongst us and knows certain things, but you know just from that foundation of a culture foundation of a culture because he talked about the the three levels of learning memorization is is only important at the beginning stages of learning um, memorization is it keeps you where society wants you to be but it's an important aspect of, of us being humans I memorize something boom I could regurgitate it but when you start and, and and when you start when you take it to intelligence of the mind, now I'm thinking about the answers that I'm giving. You know what I'm saying? So I started out by writing these questions because uh, the young people that we was working with never asked questions. And the old people I was w working with wasn't asking questions. So now I'd say, well, boom, let's start, let's start a process where we can get people to start engaging in conversations where question and answering is the modality of the whole of the whole piece. So we laid the questions out. And I got this concept from 
when I was studying some stuff about ancient ancient Egypt, they was talking about the importance of the heart. You know what I'm saying? Because they was talking about intelligence of the heart. I'm like, intelligence of the heart? So you start reading into it, the Egyptians didn't didn't really believe in this this super intelligent mind. They thought that the ultimate the ultimate knowledge, the ultimate wisdom came from the heart. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you start looking into martial arts and you start seeing the same pattern because in martial arts, one of the things that you start to notice is that in the beginning of your training, well, let me let me do let me let me talk, talk about capoeira. When we started, when I started taking capoeira, one of the first things my instructor told me, he said, the most dangerous person to ever fight when you go into the holder is a new person. I said, what? He said, yeah, because a new person don't know the rules, they don't know the forms, and they liable to throw a kick from anywhere. And because they're able to do that, that makes them dangerous. Then you look at other martial arts, it's the same thing, because when, um, when, you, when, you, when you start fighting, it's, it's certain rules that go with the fight, but if a person don't know, that, know the rules, it makes them dangerous. And one of the things you see as you progress through martial arts is that an individual starts and he learns and he memorizes the patterns, he, 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 the katas, the, the forms, the styles. He starts mimicking. And then you start noticing that the individual starts taking the basics of what he learns and take it to another level. That's intelligence of the heart. But then the final stage of all martial arts is eventually when you make it to such a level that you done forgot everything you learned. And now everything that you was learning in that martial art no longer is here, is here. So now you don't even remember the forms no more, but somebody jump out and say, boo, you, you whooping them before you know what happens. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what we're trying to do with this because once you get this, because the, the, the object is to learn the answer the way it is now. But then get to a point to where, when you're standing where he is, teaching this five years from now, how does a warrior learn? It's coming off from you. Here's the basic answer, but let me take it deeper. Let me take it deeper. Um, I, I just want to say one last thing. Something you brought up for the gentleman over there. Um, I'm thinking about constructing our own knowledge. Like, when we're having discussion, when you ask a question and you hear other people's um, answers, then it gives you, it allows you to take what you already know and what they just said and maybe construct a new understanding. One of the issues that we have as a people is this whole idea of, um, I, I done lost the word, but the whole idea that when we learn new things and it doesn't fit with the schema or the knowledge that we already have, we want to reject it or act like it's not there. We don't understand how to or we're not willing to construct new knowledge. One thing I say um, to my students all the time, my job is not to teach you what to think, it's to teach you how to think. So I may not... I may not provide you with all the answers. I may not have all the answers, but hopefully you'll leave here, you'll do your own research, or you'll listen to what other people have to say on the topic, and you'll construct your own meaningful understanding of that information, something that will be meaningful for you. So when we construct our own knowledge, I think that that's when it gets to our heart. I want to say, Sue, in Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, was saying the, another thing, another example would be um, driving. You know, when you first start driving, you're, you know, you're on it for every move. You just go, okay, you have to come here, turn the signal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> My cousin's still got to do that. But, um, <laughs> so you, that's, it, you, you are on, on every rule and every law and so forth and turn signal before you turn and stop. You know, you're thinking of everything. But once you start it, once you get, you know, get comfortable, then it's second nature. Oh, my God. Right. You, you be driving like this. <laughs> Read the book. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. Some of y'all, some of y'all, this good. Some of y'all, this good. I'm glad there's two. Look. Or, or, we like to drive sleep. 
with passengers in the car. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm good at that. That's my <laughs> that's my thing. I, I think I went to sleep one day. Consci- I said I'm gonna take a nap real quick. <laughs> I got pulled over, but <laughs> I, I actually consciously told myself I'm just gonna shut. My, and I was driving. I'm just gonna shut my eyes for two seconds. And that's that's <laughs> one. No, and I should have. Wait a minute, my, my five year old. I said we need to pray. He said, Well, I'll pray. I just need you to watch. <laughs> So the whole piece is making it your own. Learn the questions, then eventually it becomes your own. But go ahead. All right. So, next question is: What must a worry do to become? What must a worry do to become great? We must die, or we must be willing to sacrifice. Yeah, I had, I had to to amend amend that answer because of the fact that we were working with kids regularly in school. So oh. parents looking at like what? <laughs> what? They're talking about we gotta die. What? <laughs> you just see it. When, we, we was at East High School when I, I we was at East High School one time, and uh, the, they would get up and and I had a group of the young men do do the question, and they got to that part. You you should see some of those parents' face. Say, you know, what must the warrior do to be great? We must <laughs> die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we yeah, get into the explanation. Does it mean like die I, dead, I, or I, does it just I, mean I, like die? You're just shedding that. See, there you go. When when I see, doing it, you go ahead. When I see, oh, when I see when I see that, I think a certain part of the common person before they become a warrior. Before they hit mastery, a part a part of that of, of who you were right. must die. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's evident if you're in any processes. And if you look at ancient rites of passage systems, the whole object was to kill the boy. Mm. Or kill the in order for the man to live or the woman to live, the boy must die. And 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 with that, I mean, if you look at because like in this culture, we have stigmatized death. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a very fearful thing. You know what I'm saying? And in fact, when you look at death, death is one of the most natural things that we experience as human beings. You know what I'm saying? It's very natural, but we're going to get into the explanation of that, but the prophet has something to say. I mean, this can go several different ways. Um, like you There you go. That's another way to it. And like we changed, it was changed, and like I said, that's that's part of the process. It was changed to make other people outside of our culture feel comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? But when you with me, if you say we must be willing to sacrifice, and we in a room like this, and I'm amongst family, dog, say, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Come on, dude. What, what must we do? We must die. And then we go into it. Go ahead. All right, so this is question number four, which is, what must a warrior do to become great? We must be willing to die. Explain. It's number five. We must be willing to die to all the unbalanced passions. What are these unbalanced passions? These passions are, are fear. Go ahead, man. Fear, sadness, loneliness, anger, hatred, selfishness, oh god, there's a lot, war, poverty, um, basically a mentality box. Let me put it this way. If someone's going to trap me into a, if someone's like going to trap me into a box and tell me that the box is the world, I'm going to believe it because you trapped me in the box. But... If I actually like have a curiosity and I have like the courage to step out of the box and see a whole mm. new different world, automatically I killed the person that was in the box because now I'm outside the box. Mm. Just like how Tim said, um, once you start to internalize the questions, you get your own perspective. And you take you take the passage the pa- ah the unbalanced passage passions that matter to you, and you put those in your book. But in general, 
uh, balanced passions are fear, envy, pride, greed, sloth, lust, and anger. All these passions are opposed to being consciousness, and consciousness is the first step to greatness. That's dope. They ain't no deal. Right. You remember that? Go ahead. I know by heart. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> wow, that's dope. But, um, we said it again. I, what is that? What'd you say? What are the unbalanced passions? Fear, envy, pr- fear, envy, pride, greed, sloth, lust, and anger. All these passions are opposed to being consciousness. The consciousness is the first step to greatness. Wow. So those were eventually I'm going to add a, an additional question. What does it mean to be conscious? And the, answer, the answer I got from um, one of my urban warriors, who's actually with his dad on our, on this particular this particular week, so he's not able to come. But last year, a couple weeks before his birthday, he told me being conscious is knowing who you are, where you are, and what your assignment is. Mm-hmm. You need to add that ASAP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You share mm-hmm. for young and old. old. You said who you are, what you are. Who you are, where you are, and what your assignment is. So in different aspects of our lives, we're, we are conscious. And so, but there are other parts where we are unconscious. We, we don't know who we are, where we are, or what our assignment is in that particular situation. And it causes us to, to be in other conflicts or causes other hardships or heartache. So some of the questions that when I published them, I'm not gonna put the whole thing down. It's sort of like the uh, the pledge, because publicly on most of the pledges, I don't end it the same way. Um, but it's certain things that are just for us. You know what I'm saying? So, but go ahead. How many was you supposed to do? Seven? You told me four. Five. Oh, five. So I went over the first five questions. I just realized you added a question because originally there were 36, but the other 37 questions you do have access to. Um, take advantage of it. By the time we meet next week, you guys could. Um, Is it next week or the week after? Week after yeah. next. You guys could uh, look over the questions, look at the first 14, and you see a question that jumps out at you, come back the week after next, and uh, Bring the question up. It's available at tribe. tribe. and it's under. Uh, go down. Oh, travel myth. But by next week, I will have a book for you guys. Also. So any questions? So we're looking over the first 14, and if you have any questions, bring them back. Yep, and you see when it jumps out. Try to memorize the first five. Uh, What I missed was the um, the three three levels. Three levels of learning. learning. Yeah. Memorization, intelligence of the mind, and intelligence of the heart. First two, hopefully this process will help take you through. The third, third level, it's all on the individual. It's all on you. So the birds flew out the box. All right, Deshaun, I see you. I'm surprised you ain't having spinning and stuff. That's. I did this like five minutes before you got here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell it on yourself. So, so it's a suggestion to uh, make your uh, print bigger. Oh. Also, you can make that available.
now we can move to the eating, cleaning it up, and getting on out. Out. Unless there's any other question. Now, check. Make sure you check out this uh, this mint piece. I'm gonna write the uh, website for you. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for tuning in. Those that tuned in, this is the end of the session. I'm gonna go on some music by uh, uh, Immortal Technique. people. 